Good morning, everyone. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Northern Virginia. It's really crisp and oh, I just love it when it's like this. I don't like it too hot. I wanna take you on a tour of my woodland garden today. It's just about to get started and get going. A lot of the blooms that you are going to see today are part of that 10% non-native that um, go with my name, but I am gonna show you uh, the natives that are starting to emerge. I'm gonna take you up on my deck here and just show you from the deck what Caesar's garden or the woodland garden looks like right now. And I got it nice and freshly mulched just for you guys and for this tour because I just love it when I have a new layer of wood chip mulch. Okay, let's go down. So right here is the wood chip mulch and it's gonna go through my entire woodland garden. I get my wood chip mulch from chipdrop.com and it's a free and I've actually never donated. Right here in front of the deck, I have it lined with um, a blue sedge. It's either Carex laxicalmus or Carex blackasperma. I got them mixed up a while ago. And then you can see the beautiful mounds of bottled gentian coming up. And I responded to a question in the um, comments about bottled gentian and that it takes a while to get the blooms. But I wanted you guys to see here what the the nice, neat, and tidy mounds look like while you're waiting for your actual flowers. This area here, I use or encourage actually the violets, the common wild violets to um, be the ground cover. Here is some virgin's bower starting, getting started for the season. And this is a tripod that I use to keep that to allow it to grow up and then let me show you down here I talked about before how I cut my Hypericum prolificums back hard if you can see the green in there that is starting to sprout up and then I had told you that I had transplanted the coral honeysuckle over here so that's what, what I did um, in the dormant season. Okay, so this is a look at the garden coming into it right here. This was an oak that died. It was really sad. I actually had to leave the house when they had to bring it down because it was just so sad. But anyway, right here is where I pile up some sticks because there's been a hole in the stump and I thought it would be a really good place for um, the wildlife to take shelter. And then those are just self-seeded uh, blue sedges. I'm going to call them blue sedges because I don't know if it's Flaccosperma or Laxicolmus. And there's also some self-seeded, if that's the right term, ferns in there as well that I didn't put there. Look how cool this lichen is. I think it's lichen. Okay. So this is walking down and over here is where we had the bottle gentian. Now this is um, an anemone that I inherited. I'm pretty sure it's not the native. This was here when we moved in and I just try and pretend that it is the native. But <laughs> anyway, it, it kind of just does that and nothing else. Um, and then in here, this is where I have some golden Alexanders. But soon, and I haven't seen them yet, the jack in the pulpit should start coming up. Here are some non-native uh, bleeding hearts that um, just have stayed there, haven't done anything, but I inherited those when I moved in, those have been there. Okay, so coming down the path, this is hopefully the vine gets started here. I've put coral honeysuckle and um, virgin's bower there, but this whole area is Whitewood Aster, one of my absolute favorites. And then I also have a whole patch of the dog tooth violet back there, which has started to bloom just last year. And then behind that is more mountain mint. Here in the front is some more um, plants I inherited when 
we bought the house. Those are just distill these. So um, I actually have goat's beard, which I think is false astilbe, back here, and that is a native. Some daffodils that are about to get started. Right in this whole area will be full of May apples at some point soon. And there's like one of my favorite, favorite grasses, bottle brush grass, really greening up and looking pretty. And that area has um, spider warts and trillium and grasses and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, here's some daffodils. And I know daffodils aren't native, but you know, you get so, it, it just gives me so much joy in the early spring to see these and gives me so much motivation. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Right here is my witch hazel. And this this deer cage right here definitely needs to be brought up some. And then I have a red bud cage back here and some spice bush that I don't think are doing well. Spice bush never do well on my property. I'm not 100% why. But this area is all just woodland, asters, woodland, goldenrod, ferns all sorts of fun stuff but you can see all the green down here the little sedges there's a hypericum prolificum so everything is just starting to pop up just starting to okay so coming back here these are non-native azaleas I actually don't have a problem with them and I leave them because the deer eat them and so if the deer will eat those instead of my native plants that makes me happy. Here's some hellebores. Now this area is just barely starting to get going. Here is the native pachysandra so that's Allegheny Spurge and they have just the absolute coolest blooms. This area is a lot of white wood aster as well. On this side, we have some more hellebores. I have a couple hellebore patches that I keep an eye on. And then here is one of my favorites, golden ragwort. And you can see they are about to start blooming and right now they have their purple jewel tone buds. Here is some more bottle brush grass. And then that is, you're gonna see some more of that. That's Carrick Sprengali. I really like it. And it's actually not native to where I live in Virginia. It's native just a little bit north in Maryland, in Delaware, in Pennsylvania. So if you live there, I really love this sedge. Back there is another patch of golden ragwort. I mean, just look how it's covering the ground. And that is a very dry area. I'll show you, uh, and it's taken a, a little while for it to get that much of a carpet, but I'll show you an area that's not dry and it's just taken over. So here, right here, this is kind of cool looking. Here is Allegheny Spurge, right next to the big, beautiful glaucus leaves of the Virginia Bluebells. And their show is just about to get started. Here's a little bloom over here. There's a persimmon in there, and this is just supposed to be white wood aster, uh, different sedges, Virginia bluebells in the spring. So hopefully at some point it's just covered with greenery and blooms in the woodland, in the dry woodland actually, from spring through fall. Here's a Hypericum prolificum, and then this area is all lady fern, violets, um, hookara, some golden ragwort. I used to have those primroses there, but I put them up on the deck in a pot, and I inherited them with the property, and then I put uh, Carex amphibola in there. Here's a red bud. Okay. Over on this side, there's a couple fringe trees, 
a service berry, and a spice bush. If you haven't seen this before and you're new to my channel and my woodland, you'll see a lot of these. And when we have limbs that come down, I have my husband cut the limbs about that length. Those are just about perfect. I put them in nice, neat little piles and they are habitat for the insects and then also um, food for the birds. Here is one of my favorites, Devil's Walking Stick. It's huge. <laughs> this area is a greening up with the uh, violets as the ground cover. Oh, here's a, here you go. Here's Allegheny Spurge in bloom. Isn't that just the coolest bloom? And then the leaves have this modeled, is that the word for it? Modeled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D look to them. I just love it. I really wish they spread as fast as the Japanese version. Oh, there's more. Oh, nice, very nice. And then, I don't know if you can see it or if I'm reaching far enough, but there is a common blue violet about to bloom. There's some more Allegheny Pacassandra blooms. Allegheny Pacassandra. Okay, so this area greening up with the ground covers, but this is a lot of hookara. It is a lot of lady fern. This section right here, this is my dry creek bed, and all around here is Lyrely Sage. I absolutely love this plant it blooms when not a lot of other things are blooming it has rosettes like this this that i have it all around here and um, when nothing else is blooming it's like the june time they shoot up with their beautiful spikes one of my favorites this is woodland reed grass i think that's the name i absolutely love it and i'm going to be incorporating more of that throughout my yard but anyway this is a dry creek bed button bush i may just take the um cages off and see how they fare there's another wildlife habitat there that i was talking about there's a persimmon oh i don't know if i told you guys this i have a persimmon there because this tree right here, I inherited with the property. It's a Coosa dogwood. It is not native. And, you know, while it's pretty and everything, it's not adding anything to the wildlife and like the berries that it has, like the birds and stuff that can't even eat. So I planted a persimmon there in hopes that that's going to grow and at some point I can cut the Coosa down. Uh, Devil's walking stick. Um, propagates itself pretty quickly so if you can see this patch here is all devil's walking stick there 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 so if you're planting devil's walking stick just know what you're getting into this is another persimmon oh I'm not on the path <laughs> okay here's an example of the Carex sprengali which is native just slightly north to me that I absolutely love this is the first year I'm really getting to see this in action but these little pops, I think it's chartreuse, just, oh my goodness, I'm just loving it. And that is making a statement while some of my blue carexes um, are starting to get going for the season. The violets are starting to cover the ground. Here's some woodland reed grass. Absolutely love it. Um, I did have Virginia water leaf there. I'm not sure if it's still there or not. But anyway... I mean, doesn't that look fantastic? I think it does anyway. Okay, now my bird garden, give me a second. I forgot to point out my wildlife wattle fence. This right here is an experiment. And Sue, if you're watching, this is actually mine. Here is my little wattle fence. I think I'm gonna do this more in different areas and it's just providing great habitat for insects, but also that means a great food for birds and it's a way to distinguish um, your beds. So let me show you, okay. So this is coming down into this area. 
let's see if you can see it this way. I guess it looks better the other way. But anyway, it was just an area that was washing out. So I thought I would try something new there. Okay guys, on to the bird garden. Here is the other carpet of a golden ragwort that I was telling you about. This has been here for a couple years, less than the other patch. And this area is very moist, so you can see that it's really just taking hold here. And can you imagine like if the whole woodland was covered with that? I guess you consider it like, almost like woodland grass, but you can see they're starting to spike up. It's gonna be a real show in here. Here are some viburnum dentatums, and then, oh, let me take you to this because I think it's really pretty. I can't remember if I told you last year, but I planted this Chicksaw Plum. It's looking really nice. Here are my high bush blueberries that I didn't get around to um, cutting back. And then back here are all of my elderberries and I pruned them this year kind of experimentally. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Oh, there's my coral honeysuckle. It looks like I need to fix up that that tripod. Sometimes my tripods aren't as sturdy as they should be. So if you do this too, <laughs> you know, after seeing what I do, maybe use five um, bamboos and put it in further than I do. So this area, while it's all covered with the golden ragwort over there, we also have the um, Virginia bluebells and the violets. And then this whole area where I'm standing, is um, woodland sunflower. There's some other things in here, like a witch hazel. It's never done really well. Oh, this is strawberry bush. Euonymus americanus. I have this hidden in here. I don't know if you can even see those little wisps, but anyways, I have it hidden in here from the deer. I'm hoping maybe I get a bloom someday. And if you don't know, this area is totally caged because these are all berry bushes and things like that that the deer like to eat. So it is caged all the way up to about there. And it's kept the deer out since this last iteration of it, which Trisha and <laughs> Nicola, if you're watching, thank you for helping me. Okay, so going down along the path, this area, I can't remember what kind of grass that is, but I planted that. And there should be some ostrich ferns and things like that in here. Ooh, look at these Virginia bluebells. There we go. I'm hoping that my Virginia bluebells spread all throughout my woodland. So this area is royal fern, which the ferns always take a long time to come up. But it's royal fern and carexes. Here's another spot where I have the carex springali, where it pops up and it's just looking really good. I really wish this was native to Northern Virginia. I guess close enough, right? It's kind of like the purple cone flower of the, I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna say. This Carrick Spring Golly is like the purple cone flower of my sedges. <laughs> Not exactly native, like a cousin. Okay, here is my pawpaw patch. They're starting to get their buds, if you can see them. You know, the compost situation is over there. This is woodland sunflower and Azizi aria. So now we'll go around the woodland from the opposite side of things. There's the pawpaw patch right there. And then I have the beds lined with a blue sedge. This is a um, patch of hellebore. And then um, last year I lined this with rocks. It looks like I need another filling of the rocks because I didn't do it thick enough. So that would be my high bush blueberries there. I think you guys watched me do some of this work last year. There's some mountain mint in there mixed in with the daffodils. And then that's my Chickasaw Plum that I'm really proud of. There are bluebirds in there. They come back every single year. 
So this is the path separating the bird garden over here from the dry creek bed because this area gets really wet when it storms. And then I have common rush here and the creek bed is lined with sedges and there's a lot of self-seeding cardinal flower in here. Yeah, it looks, that area right there almost looks natural. I love it. Okay, I think that is the Philadelphia flea bane, if I'm not mistaken. But this area right here has that. It has a bunch of sedges. I think it's Carex grizzia. And then I have cardinal flower and obedient plant in here. And then this is some wild blue fox that is about to get started for the season. There's a patch of golden ragwort, and I have a Hypericum prolificum in there, Shirley St. John's wort. Okay, this is the path. I don't think I pointed this one out, but this path um, goes to a red bud right there, an eastern red bud right in the center. Right here, this area is pretty dry. There's some more blooming Allegheny Pachysandra, or no, Allegheny Spurge. Here's another entrance to the garden. Oops. This is um, sallow sedge, the sedge I talk about a lot that's really big and almost has a shrub-like footprint that I like to use that is there I would like to incorporate incorporate a lot more of that here is something that I'm experimenting with more like where I try to keep things a little more formal and that is um, white avens so I have a patch here they're pretty cool I don't know why they're not readily avail available but then in here is popping up is the golden ragwort and then we have ZZ Aria. The bed is lined with a blue sedge. Oh, yes. Here is the seersucker sedge. I love this sedge and it is blooming. It has, I talked about this in one of my other videos. It has like one of the most interesting blooms. It's like black and blonde. It is so cool. I had that inner planted with, with Columbine. And then this look i finally got all the rocks done around the pond it looks so much better i have two escape routes right there and right there for the wildlife and then my bubbler and look how cool this looks this is the golden ragwort and it's popping up in between all the rocks i planted it's so cool and then i need to figure out some sort of safety thing so people <laughs> maybe don't fall in there I don't know people aren't gonna fall they're smart enough but anyway right next to my pond I have more wildlife habitat so yeah guys this is what the woodland looks like right now this time of year now that things are actually starting to sprout up just gives me so much I don't know excitement for the season, like pre-excitement, I don't know. I'm just really excited about how things are shooping up and looking. And I know it probably doesn't seem like much, but this whole place is going to be totally covered in green, 90% <laughs> native plants. Yeah. So let me walk you back up the path here. Okay guys, so that is the tour today. That is my woodland tour and it is March 26, 2023. So you can see things are starting to sprout and just things starting to happen and it's so exciting. Um, so 
If this is content that appeals to you, I would really love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with your gardening friends as well. Thank you for taking your time to join me on this garden tour. Happy gardening, and I will catch you again next time.